So what you see behind me is our SmartPod platform. The SmartPod platform is designed for larger edge type of deployments uh, and data center. It's an open tank system, which essentially means um, it's, a, it's a bath of liquid, and we'll be looking at this in detail now. Um, we'll open the system and run through it. But these systems in production, together with the secondary cooling that's required, they operate at a PUE of 1.03. Um, so a massive reduction uh, and really looking at, at getting that PUE right down to, to, to one, which is the journey that we're on. Um, and they allow us to increase substantially the, the density per square meter because the smaller system can, can host up to 50 kilowatts of IT load, the bigger system uh, 100 plus. So we have configurations and deployments today that are in the range of the 100 kilowatts per tank. Um, so without further ado, we we'll, let's have a look. And um, Edgar, if you can help me open the, the unit and I'll showcase you what's in it and how it works. So what you'll see here is obviously, uh, it's a tank full of fluid. Um, the way that the fluid is managed is by uh, injecting the cold fluid at the bottom of the tank evenly along the tank. Um, it flows gently through the IT hardware and it's collected then again by the cooling distribution unit, which is the brains of the system. Uh, and the cooling distribution unit is designed to uh, pump all that fluid through a heat exchanger, which is inside of it, and transfer all the heat to the facility water loop. Um, the cooling distribution unit has certain redundancy built into it. It has two pumps. Um, it is fully submerged and it has a server form factor to be managed like a server and to be even extracted and replaced like a server. And we'll see very briefly how that, how that is done. Um, but you also, what you can also see in this tank is that we have two types of hardware configurations, 19-inch um, equipment on this side of the tank and 21-inch OCP equipment on the, on the other side. Um, today have multiple um, OEMs and ODMs in the case of uh, OCP, which are supporting, embracing, uh, and providing systems for immersion, um, and truly looking at achieving these higher density systems that allow us to, to push those rack densities up uh, and deploy these HPC environments um, in, in immersion. So, Daniel, <coughs> what, you, uh, what can you tell us about the, the um, fluid itself? We've designed this fluid specifically for this application. It's developed by Submer for immersion cooling. Um, and so it has a very long lifespan, 15 years. Um, it has the capability of capturing and transporting the heat super efficiently. Um, it's non-toxic, it's biodegradable, uh, it's classified as food grade. And another interesting property of the fluid, apart that obviously it acts as a natural barrier to dust and particles that could potentially, um, or that cause a lot of the hardware failures in data centers. Um, obviously this environment has no moving parts. It's completely silent um, because there are no moving parts and obviously the hardware failure rates directly connected to that. But another nice property of this liquid is uh, it's non-flammable um, and it makes things much easier from a data center security perspective. So very briefly again about the CDU, the brains of the machine. Um, in this unit we just have one which means we have 50 kilowatts uh, of dissipation capability. Um, we do have the possibility of deploying two CDUs in this system. Uh, which means we can either um, uh, provide more redundancy and resiliency by bringing separate water feeds to each CDU, or we can completely uh, add up the, s the dissipation capability of each of those CDUs as well. And that uh, means that we can go up to a Tier 4 category? Yeah, Tier 3, deployment. Tier 4, and actually we're, we're very close. We're working with the Uptime Institute to, to kind of get an official certification from them regarding that because a lot of our customers are asking us, hey, I want to make sure that these systems, this is a cooling system, I want to make sure it's not going to disrupt my 
um, tier certification with the Uptime Institute. Absolutely. Now we've talked about the, the inside of the tank. Let's go to the dry zone, to the outside of the tank. What can we see there? So the dry zone, um, uh, Edgar, if you can help me remove the lid, please. The dry zone is designed to uh, host the components that we don't want to submerge in the tank. Thank you. Um, the dry zone will typically host power distribution units. So these are the typical APC power distribution units that you would have at the back of a rack. We deploy them outside the tank because they don't practically ha generate any heat. But in this area, we'll also have different um, accessories for cable management. We'll have, we'll deploy switches, um, networking gear if needed, but we'll also deploy networking gear inside the tank because it's it's fully compatible. Um, copper and fiber optics are fully compatible. In, so in that's emergency. a matter of choice. It's a matter of choice. We have customers that uh, they, they want the higher density switches to be placed outside and the top of the rack lower density switches inside. It, it really depends. But another thing, another thing that we see in the, in the dry zone is the connections to the CDU. Now the connections to the CDU occur above the fluid level. So this tank does not have a single hole in it. Um, and we actually have a couple of options when it comes to tanks uh, with a single hole and a dual hole environment, meaning that we have full secondary containment of the fluid built into the tank. Um, but if you have to replace a CDU for a preventive or an emergency maintenance operation, it's as easy as uh, <coughs> disconnecting the quick uh, disconnects that are um, so these hoses will take the will connect with the facility water. Um, they're flexible hoses that typically would connect to the major distributor pipes that are supplying the water feed to the immersion tanks or other type of systems in the data center that um, that require water. And they and again, this water loop runs at very high temperatures, uh, typically in the range of 40, 45 degrees centigrade which means, again, we can work with these systems anywhere on the globe with dry cooling technology. Uh, again, go connecting with that zero water consumption. So Edgar, if you can help me disconnect one of the um, hoses so that we can show. These, these hoses are pressurized. They supply water to the system in real time. And so um, that's, that's, how, how how quick. Much, that's how quick it is to disconnect one hoses obviously we'd take both of them out and we would be able to extract a CDU in less than five minutes uh, that's the whole system is designed for that um, and of course the CDU is fully submerged in the liquid it's cooled by the liquid itself um, so all the electronics uh, uh, that are in a CDU uh, are leveraging immersion cooling technology themselves that's how much we trust our liquid to uh, that we even run our CDUs in it so, Daniel, um, now whenever we disconnect the water loop, the, the temperature in the tank will rise. Yep. Um, how long will it take before the, the servers start switching down? Yeah, yeah. And we mentioned like replacing a CDU is a five minute job. So, there's a term called that we call thermal inertia, um, which defines the amount of time uh, and the increase of temperature over time. Uh, systems will typically shut down when the set point reaches around 90, 95 degrees centigrade, you'll start seeing servers shut down. Um, I guess that's a natural security measure to uh, an issue like a, a full system failure. But um, you typically have with a fully loaded system, you have 30 minutes before that occurs. So you have more than enough time to replace a CDU. Without sh sh shutting down the system, and of course, if you have an environment where you have two CDUs, then you're looking at um, for sure no no risk of downtime at any moment in time. Absolutely. Yeah. Now we've talked about the liquid, we've talked about the dry zone. What can you tell us about the telemetry? Of yeah. So the, these systems they have more than 25 sensors in them. Um, and those sensors monitor everything from temperature flow rates, uh, the heat that's being exchanged, fluid quality, et cetera. And all that telemetry uh, is accessible for an open <coughs> API. And at the same time, we obviously represent that on a visual 
uh, interface to allow customers to, in this case, see the um, operation of a single unit. So the set point temperature, the mechanical PUE of the system, uh, the, uh, the temperature at which the fluid is at the very top of the system, the heat dissipation capabilities, and then you can obviously uh, dig into more uh, detailed information of uh, how the pumps are performing, uh, the two pumps that, as I mentioned, switch over every day to guarantee that um, the operation is resilient and that the pumps are operating correctly. Um, interestingly, also the amount of power consumption for the CDU, that's where we get our mechanical PUE. Hi, Adrian, how hey are Gloria. you? I'm good, I'm good. So, so tell me. Micropod, okay. So, um, first of all, as Gloria said, this is our newest member of the family, our baby member. Um, I like all small things, they, they are the best things that you can basically have. So this is Micropod, our data center in a box. Before I show you exactly how Micropod works, um, maybe I'll just take a minute to explain the background to the product. The concept started on looking at some of the uh, systems in the smart pod range that are used in data center. Those customers, particularly telecommunication customers, were asking us to say, okay, how do you take the benefits you've got in a data center and put it outside in any type of environment. And that's basically the concept where we came up with Micropod. Um, it works fundamentally on the same principles, and I'll explain a, a little bit about that in a moment. But the huge benefits it gives you is you can take a liquid immersion cooling with high density equipment into the edge environment. So if you think about telecommunication towers, you can really start to uh, deploy these systems on top of buildings for the 5G rollout and then the list just goes on. So we've got customers looking at uh, healthcare, we've got customers looking at emergency service locations in really harsh environments. We've got customers looking at it for oil rigs, customers looking at it for trains, etc., etc. So this product was on basically started in March of last year and we launched it in November of last year. So you can see how quickly we can take an idea from a customer and ourselves design it and deploy it. So, so that's enough about me uh, talking about Micropod. <laughs> uh, you're not going to show me a little bit of it? Ah, yes, we will. We'll okay. show you how the magic happens. So the way Micropod set up is there's two elements to it in the single unit. On here, you have the chiller and the pumps. And on here, you have the housing for the IT equipment. So let me explain a little bit more by opening the lid. So the way we've set it up is you've got a chiller and, a, and the cooling system here. They move up to 90 liters of the same smart coolant fluid that Peter gave you the, the great demonstration with the blowtorch. That moves through the system. Um, before we get inside, and if you want to come a little bit closer, I will let, I'll show you the inside the tank. <laughs> but here we have tamper switches. So again, going back to Paul's demonstration on the software, if anybody tampers with the system, we can see remotely at any time. Um, we also have the sealants, which I will show you now. So it's completely sealed. So if you look it up inside, oh, excuse me. Um, the seal basically means no air, nothing can get inside it at all. You can get no dirt inside it, it's completely sealed. So the same benefits from the smart coolant that are used in the larger tanks, you get into the smaller environment. So the hardware is protected and perfectly safe there in its own smart cool on environment yeah absolutely so now you get to the fun part so inside the tank um, this is the real benefit that we're seeing the customers are really excited about so you can put high density equipment up to six years worth of it equipment uh, inside this small environment so that basically means you know if you look inside the tank you will see there's a switch standard switch you have the fluid it is real I know it looks clear, but it is there. And uh, here is a node that really starts to show the benefit. So this is a extremely high dense, uh, ruggedized IoT server node. Um, you can basically populate in here. You can put two of them on top of each other. So if you think about that logically, you can start to put more and more capacity inside a smaller space. And okay. I mean, that's the principles of how it works. Um, some basic fundamentals. Inside here, you have the same quick connect hoses that you have in the 
main smart pods. Uh, the weight of it um, currently is just under 300 kilograms. It, we will be getting that down to 200 kilograms. And that, in, in essence, is Micropod. Okay. And I understand that it's called a data center in a box because uh, as a difference as the smart pods, uh, it has the tank. Yep. And then it has also the secondary cooling yep. uh, on it. So yep. it's like the perfect solution, all packed and ready yep. to use. Yep. Okay. And it has connectivity, standard connectivity as well. So you can pretty much put it anywhere. Wow. Really a lot of things to a data center in a box. Cool. <laughs> Submer data centers that make sense.